Good day, brothers and sisters. My name is Coco Javier. I'm from the Philippines, and welcome to the to our second session. In the first talk, we have heard about the call to the new evangelization. So now we have come to know better what new evangelization truly is. And hopefully throughout this, the, all the talks that we'll be having through this virtual NEC, you'll be able to get to know better uh, as it goes by what new evangelization is, and we'll be able to really apply it in our lives, especially in the life of our church, and apply it in our local context. We also have come to realize that the new evangelization is a call sounded by our church for our times. And we know that it's crucial for the life of our church and for her future. And since it's a call, there should always be a response. So if the call is new evangelization, what should our response be? And our lay Catholic response is no other than the live Christ, share Christ mission. And that will be my topic for this second session, the LCSC mission. What are we all about in live Christ, share Christ? So we know that this call has been sounded a number of times by our church. And uh, it was first talked about by St. John Paul II when he was speaking to the Latin American bishops in Haiti in 1983. And then he kept on repeating this and actually he reiterated this in his papal encyclical Redemptoris Misho. It says there, I sense that the moment has come to commit all the church's energies to a new evangelization and to the mission agendas. No believer in Christ, no institution of the church can avoid the supreme duty. I repeat, no one, no institution can avoid the supreme duty to proclaim Christ to all peoples. So those are the words of the great St. John Paul II. And we, have a sacred duty, the supreme duty to proclaim Christ to all peoples. I like to emphasize there, all peoples. And that's why we are doing the Live Christ, Share Christ mission, because this is our way of proclaiming Christ to all peoples. So let us now discuss what are the purposes of Live Christ, Share Christ. There are four purposes that I would like to share with you. The very first one is this, that we want to do the very mission of Jesus, the very mission of our Lord Jesus Christ. Just before Jesus ascended into heaven, he gave the Great Commission. And we can find it in a number of uh, Gospels. And, uh, towards the end of the Gospels, you'll find this Great Commissioning. And this Great Commissioning is his mandate to all, to all Catholics, to all Christians, no one is accepted from this. As long as you are a baptized Christian, we are called to do this. We must do this. And we can find this in Mark 16, 15. It says there, and he said to them, that's Jesus talking, go you into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Preach the gospel to every creature. Similar to what uh, St. John Paul uh, the second said, proclaim the gospel to all peoples, proclaim Christ to all peoples, preach the gospel to every creature. We can also find this in Matthew 28, 19. It's a much more popular, I would say, version of the Great Commissioning. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Those were the final words of our Lord Jesus Christ. And being final words, we know that they are very important. And we should hold them sacred. What I mean by that is that we should be able to really do this. We should be able to fulfill this. Because this is the last, uh, one of the last things that our Lord Jesus Christ said before he ascended to heaven. So our church, the Catholic Church, is supposed to be a missionary church. We are called to do mission. We are called to become fishers of men. Remember, the very first apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ were fishermen. We had uh, James and John, Peter and Andrew. They were fishermen. And uh, they were called to be fishers of men by our Lord Jesus Christ. So they followed the 
they followed what Jesus has ordered them, and that same order is being passed on to us. And that is what we want to fulfill here in the Live Christ, Share Christ mission. Next, second purpose is that we want to mainstream Catholic lay evangelization. What do we mean by the word mainstream? Uh, the word mainstream means to make normal. Mainstream as a verb means to make normal, to make it the dominant activity. We want it to be the trend. We want it to be the dominant behavior. So we want Catholic lay evangelization to be the dominant activity in our parishes, to be the dominant preoccupation of our church, to be the dominant preoccupation of every Catholic. You know that uh, a lot of Catholics, for example, here in the Philippines, a lot of us were born into the Catholic faith, meaning um, our parents are Catholic. We were born Catholic. We were we had infant baptism. We, I was I was baptized when I was still a baby. It was my parents who, and my godparents who answered for me. And usually, when you were when you are baptized uh, early on into the church in your uh, as a baby, uh, there's a tendency that you would, uh, as life goes on, you you will you take your faith for granted because it's something that was just passed on to you, or it's something that's already a given in your, in your environment. Like here in the Philippines, we are a Catholic country. Uh, I came from a Catholic family, it's already a given. And even in my own personal experience, as, a, as I grew up and as I grew older, I, I felt myself uh, growing distant from the church. When I was still young, I, I was, brought my by my parents to mass every sunday but when i became high school and i can uh, handle my own schedule already there were times that i would miss mass and there was a time that i didn't hold uh they didn't put much importance to my faith so a lot of catholics have become lapsed catholics and we want to bring back all lapsed catholics back to god and back to the church the catholic church is our home and we want to bring back lapsed Catholics back to the church. We are very much aware of the gospel story, uh, the parable of the lost sheep. So Jesus said there that the, the good shepherd went out of his way, left the 99 to, sh to, to, to seek the one that was lost. But nowadays we've heard this so many times and it has all, all also been talked about that the, the tables have turned. It's not the 91, 99 that's good and the, the, only the one that's lost, but uh, it's actually the 99 that's lost right now. Only the one or only 1% is actually faithful. Uh, just to give you some bit of a, a more concrete example in this is that is, uh, here in the Philippines, we are a Catholic country and about, I would say about 80% of the Philippines is Christian, 90% of that would be Catholics. Uh, we're very much over the 100 million uh, population. So just for purposes of computing, let's say there's 100 million Filipinos, uh, about 72 million would be Catholics, somewhere around that number. But how many are going to church every Sunday? How many are faithfully attending Mass every Sunday and participating in the sacraments? Uh, they made a survey before uh, a couple of years ago, and they say that only about 15 to 18 percent of Catholics here in the Philippines go to Mass every Sunday. When you look at the churches, they're packed, they're full. Uh, before the pandemic happened, usually in a in a on a given any given Sunday, there will be about four, uh, at least four to eight masses in any given parish, and the churches would be full. But though the churches are full. That's not, the, that's not everyone, that's not all the Catholics in that uh, whole parish. That would only be about 15 to 18 percent of the actual Catholics, of the actual parishioners. So about uh, 82 percent are missing, about 82 percent are lapsed Catholics. So our intent in, in LCSC is to bring lapsed Catholics back to God and back to the church. Of course, we begin with those who are Catholics and then reach out to 
later on to the to other to other people outside our outside the Catholic Church. The third purpose of the LCS mission is that we want Catholics to become true Christians. And you might be surprised by these statements. <laughs> Catholics, true Christians. Of course, we Catholics are Christians. The, the Catholic faith is the one true faith, the one true church that our Lord Jesus Christ himself established, right? We know that. But not all Catholics are really able to appreciate and embrace the beauty of our Catholic faith. What I mean by that is that we want in LCSC for every Catholic to meet, live, and share Jesus Christ in their life. What do we mean by meet? We want everyone to have a, that personal conversion, a conversion experience, you know, a turning away from sin and a going back to God experience, similar to what the apostles and even St. Paul and the saints have experienced. Uh, it is the Lord's desire for everyone to have a personal relationship with him. So we want every Catholic to be able to experience a personal relationship with Jesus. I never thought of that before. But later on, as I went on in life, uh, when I became, when I underwent renewal, I, be, I began to develop a personal relationship. And as days go by, as I mature in my faith, I develop that uh, intimacy, that communion with the Lord. And that is all about meeting Christ daily in our lives. Second, we want Catholics to live Christ in their life. And what we, what we mean by that is that we want everyone to be able to experience and strive for holiness and discipleship. Uh, we can find this in 1 Peter uh, 1 verses 15 to 16. It says there, let me read. 1 Peter 1 15 to 16. It says here, but as he who called you is holy, be holy yourselves in every aspect of your conduct. For it is written, be holy because I am holy. And that is the Lord's call for us. We are called to be holy. We are called to be saints. Every Catholic, every person is called to be a saint. Uh, if I ask you right now, who among you would want to get to heaven? If you're in your right mind, you'd, you'll raise your hand, right? Everyone would raise their hand. No one would want to go to hell. No one would just say, okay, I'm content with getting to purgatory and that's it. Of course, everyone would want to get to heaven. But for us to get to heaven, we have to strive for holiness. You know, we have to strive daily for holiness. And we have to truly live our lives as a disciple of our Lord Jesus. And we can find that in... Uh, Luke 9, verse 23. What does it say in Luke 9, verse 23? It says here, Then he said to all, this is Jesus speaking, talking to his apostles and uh, the people listening to him during that time. If anyone wishes to come after me, he must deny himself, take up his cross daily, and follow me. Wow. Those are very difficult things to do, right? It's very difficult to... To deny oneself. Nowadays, uh, the world teaches us to put ourselves first. Uh, we are made to believe that the whole world is revolving around us, which is not the Christian way of, of uh, that which is not Christian thought. That's not how we should think. But we must deny ourselves. Take, take up our cross daily and follow him. You know what? Uh, these are the commandments of our Lord Jesus Christ. It simply means that there is no other way to live. That is, this is the only way to live if we really want to follow our Lord Jesus. So we hope, we pray, and we strive for every Catholic, for every person to be able to live this out in their life. And the third is that we want Catholics to share Jesus to everyone. That is to do their part to fulfill their the Great Commission. We have talked about that a while ago in the, in the first part of this talk. It is everyone's role and it's everyone's duty. And it's actually everyone's privilege to take part in the mission of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are very blessed 
that we have been called to partake of the, uh, in the great commission. Imagine the Lord has entrusted to us this work. And not only has he entrusted us, but he enables us. He empowers us to carry out his orders to the rest of the world. And uh, the last purpose of the LCSC is to help bring our church to the cutting edge of the third millennium. We are in the third millennium. And what do we mean by cutting edge? Uh, here in the picture, you can see there the picture of St. John Paul II. And it says a new evangelization. It should be new in ardor. There should be new fervor. We should be able to uh, have new methods and new expressions, but the same basic gospel message of our Lord Jesus Christ. We have to be to make the, the gospel message and its proclamation relevant to our times nowadays. You'll be hearing more of that uh, later on in this talk and in the next talk when we discuss the different components of uh, LCSC. But we have to, here in the Live Christian Christ mission, we want to help bring our church to the cutting edge of the third millennium. Uh, it is a very good example of what we're doing right now. Uh, I'm here in my home, actually in the room of uh, my kids. This is their study room. I'm a homeschooling parent together with, with my wife. This is their study area. You can see books uh, behind me. Uh, and uh, as I sit here, as I talk here in the Philippines, you can hear me in your own country. And we're making use of technology. And this is one way of doing. It's a new method in, in evangelizing. You know what uh, the early Christians did and the early apostles did is that they went to every town walking or riding the horse or taking the ship, you know, during the time. But nowadays, we don't even have to take the plane. I don't even have to go to your country. But I will be able to proclaim God's words to you through technology. So those four things, those four purposes, if I may, if we may uh, review them, are the four purposes of LCSC. First is to do the very mission of Jesus. Second is to mainstream Catholic lay evangelization. Third is that we want Catholics to become true Christians. And the fourth purpose is to, we want to help to bring our church, the Catholic church, to the cutting edge of the third millennium. So LCSC also tries to restore what is missing in our church today. What, Coco, you're saying that there are a number of things that are missing in our church today? Yes, there are, and I'd like to discuss them to you. This next part. First, we want to be able to bring back a vision for evangelization in our church. Uh, this is why our church exists. We, uh, as I said a while ago, the, the very first uh, apostles were fishermen. And Jesus said, I will make you fishers of men. One of the very beautiful icons of our church is the boat, the fishing boat. We have a number of gospel stories uh, that uh, happened in the boat, you know, and then when Jesus attracted them to become fishers of men, when Jesus uh, was uh, walked on water, when they encountered the storm in the middle of the See, and then, of course, uh, when Jesus rose again, uh, when he asked the apostles to lower their nets for a catch, you know what, the, the setting is always in a boat. And uh, simply because we are called to fish for men. And uh, nowadays, uh, when you go to a church or a parish or any group for that matter, it's very seldom that you would hear that they have a, an evangelization target or a vision for evangelization. And we want to bring that back to, to each Catholic group, to each uh, parish, to each organization, to remind them that, that we all should have a vision for evangelization. And primarily our church exists for mission and evangelization. Second thing that we want to bring back, to restore to our church today is that we want to restore the spirituality of Pentecost. In Acts 1 verse 8, it says there, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. That is what happened to the 
apostles, into the early Christians, right? Uh, they were all scared. They were uh, scared for their lives. They were timid. They didn't want to go out. But when the Holy Spirit came, the Holy Spirit empowered them, emboldened them, enabled them, gave them gifts. And they made use of these gifts to proclaim God's message. You know what? Instantaneously, when the Holy Spirit came, they went out of the upper room and they started to preach. And you can find in the Acts of the Apostles that, for example, when Peter preached on that day, 3,000 people were converted. For a massive worldwide evangelization to happen, we have to bring back the spirituality of Pentecost. Uh, for us Catholics, uh, I don't know, in, your, in the culture of your country, uh, here in the Philippines, uh, people have, uh, we always talk about our Lord God, God the Father, Him being the Creator, the Almighty. Uh, we are taught that. And then, of course, we have Jesus Christ, the second person, the whole city. We have uh, numerous uh, icons for our Lord Jesus Christ here in the Philippines. The very first icon of Christianity here in the Philippines is the Santo Nino, the, the child Jesus. And then, of course, we have the crucified Christ and all the different uh, images of Jesus. So the Fil Fil Filipinos have a devotion to our Lord Jesus. But one of the more, the one of the neglected person in the Trinity uh, when it comes to expressing our faith in the Philippines is the Holy Spirit. So we have to be able to understand the role of the Holy Spirit. Uh, there is no renewal and there is no revival without Pentecost. And what we want to happen is for that Pentecost experience of the early Christians to be experienced by the Christians today. Uh, I personally have experienced that. I never imagined myself to be able to, to be doing what I'm doing right now. I'm a, I'm a missionary. I've been to so many countries. In my er, early years in life, I never dreamt of becoming a missionary. But later on, the Lord called me after having experienced personal conversion and having experience of baptism uh, in the Holy Spirit and being able to receive the gifts of the Holy Spirit. I was empowered by our Lord God and I was given the different gifts and one of which is to be able to proclaim the good news boldly to, to all the places that I go to. And I thank the Lord for that. And that same power, that same spirit is available to Christians today. And we, here in LCSC, we want every person to realize that and to make the Holy Spirit very much a part of their daily life. Third is that we want to restore the vision for parishes. Usually parishes, uh, when, when they have become organized and when they have become so big already and uh, really hierarchical, uh, they go into the mode of maintenance. Of course, it's important for the parish priest to be able to conduct the sacraments. But when the parishes become too big, uh, they go into that maintenance mode and they don't go on mission anymore. They don't go out to the peripheries and they don't try to evangelize. Sometimes uh, even evangelization or going on mission or Trying to convert people to the Catholic faith is frowned upon. It's been uh, described as proselytism, and proselytism has taken on a negative, uh, uh, negative understanding nowadays. But actually, that's what we're called to do. For uh, for the, the church has to be missionary. The church has to evangelize, and we want to be able to put that vision for the parishes. You know what? Or the parish has so many activities, and so many organizations. You know, uh, for example, a parish could have uh, the lectors group, of course, the uh, Eucharistic ministers group, and then we have a mandated org such as the Knights of Columbus or Missionary Families of Christ. Uh, each group has their own charism. Uh, there is so much diversity within the Catholic Church because that's how rich our faith is, and that's how rich the Holy Spirit works. The Holy Spirit, the, the, the of which the gifts of the Holy Spirit uh, is being made abundant to, to everyone, you know? And though there's 
that there's diversity, that there can be unity. And how do we achieve that? When we are able to do one mission, when all of these groups come together and, and evangelize and reach out to lapsed Catholics and to those who haven't known Christ yet. When we work together, that's a very beautiful thing happening. What the, when diversity, uh, when unity and diversity happen, happens, that's the Holy Spirit at work. So we are uh, not just called to be on a maintenance mode, but to go on mission. We are also called not just to perform the different services, the usual services that are needed in the parish, but we are called to, to do intense. You know what? Formation uh, for our parishioners, for our groups. You know, it's not enough that we, we do the work, but it's also important that we get formed, that we may grow deeper in our relationship with the Lord, that the Lord may be able to use us even more powerfully as we grow in our maturity in our faith. And lastly, uh, we want to be able to bring back, to restore, uh, uh, a way to respond to holiness and discipleship. Uh, I mentioned this a while ago that one of the purposes of LCSC is to be able to help people respond to God's call for holiness and discipleship. And uh, here in LCSC, we're able to provide uh, different ways for people to grow in holiness and discipleship. And we, we do that. Here in LCSC, we are able to do that because we have different components in the Live Christ, Share Christ mission. The very first component is the Life in Christ seminar. It's a, it's a seminar consisting of five talks uh, discussing gospel truths. We talk about our Lord God and his plan for us, his great plans for us. We talk about uh, what it means to be a Christian. How do we live out? Uh, our call, uh, being Christians, and then we talk about repentance, talk about sin, repentance, and faith. We talk about the Holy Spirit and receiving the gifts that the Holy Spirit gives. And we talk about growing in the Spirit. Those are different topics in the Life in Christ seminar. And uh, that is, uh, the, the LCS is some sort of a, we want everyone to have that common experience because usually, a lot of personal conversion has happened when people enter into the, or experience the Life in Christ seminar. I for myself has experienced that. And my personal conversion happened because of the talks that I heard there. Second basic component that we have in LCSC are the four pillars. What are the four pillars? The, they are, they all begin with the word live because you're live Christ, share Christ. So the four pillars begin with the word live. And they address the different uh, uh, age groups and the different uh, elements that we believe that are important in our Catholic faith. First group that we address are the youth. So we have a work for young people in LCSC and we call them the live pure. You know, it's uh, it's uh, the work where we proclaim to the young people the gospel of chastity, the gospel of purity. There they are challenged to live pure and chaste lives and to really start giving their life to, to God by living a life of purity and chastity in, 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 their, in their young age. And we've seen this, uh, we've seen a lot of conversion happening in young people through our work in live pure. So that's the first pillar. The second pillar addresses uh, the life issues. We have a pro-life work in Live Christ, share Christ, and the second pillar is called the live life uh, pillar. So there we, we tackle on the different issues of life. We, talk, we tackle uh, our response to the challenges to, to, our, to, the, to our work for life here in the Catholic Church. You know, there are so many, there's a, an agenda in the world right now trying to bring down the family, trying to bring down uh, life. You know, so... We, we, we discuss that and we have a work that is a focus on that and that is on the live life pillar. The third is uh, element, the third thing is that we want to teach Catholics to, to learn how to be the Bible, to go back into the word of, the, to the word of God because 
as Saint Jerome has said, uh, ignorance of scriptures is ignorance of Christ. Uh, it is very sad that our Protestant brethren are much more in love with the Word of God than than Catholics. Uh, we want Catholics to really dive deeply into the, the Word of the Lord, and we have a method in that. We have a what we call the liturgical Bible study, but the third pillar is called live the word. Let's live the word. The fourth pillar addresses our work with the poor. Of course, the Lord has called us to help our brothers uh, who are in need. And we've seen that happen in the early Christian communities where they shared everything, what they had in common, and there was no needy person among them. And our work for the poor in uh, the Live Christ, Share Christ mission, in the, that is the, under the fourth pillar, it's called the Live Full Pillar, but the, the, the work uh, specifically is done by a movement called the No One in Need Movement, and I'm part of that, so I'm wearing the shirt right now, the No One in Need Movement. So the four pillars are uh, live pure, live life, live the word, and live full. And uh, the third component of the Live Christ, Share Christ mission is a servant leaders formation. As I've said a while ago, we know that uh, there are already different groups existing in the, in the church, in the parishes, and, but all of these groups can come together. And here in LCSC, we can offer this to them, especially to the leaders, to the ones who are already active serving in the church. We can offer servant leaders formation. And we want everyone, as I've said a while ago, to but even to grow in holiness and discipleship. And this is sort of one way of addressing that to, to in helping uh, all the people, uh, the Catholics, to grow in holiness and discipleship for our servant leaders formation. So those are the three basic uh, components of LCSC. So as I end, I'd like to share to you the vision and mission of LCSC. We, our vision is that we want to have a church renewed, empowered, and missionary. That is what we've discussed throughout this whole talk. And the mission of LCSC, we have three, three items there in our mission. We want to mainstream Catholic lay evangelization, reaching to the grassroots and the peripheries in response to the call to the new evangelization. Second, we want for every Catholic to meet Christ, to live Christ, and to share Christ. And third, we want to energize and equip the laity, the lay people, in the power of the Holy Spirit. So here it is, uh, brothers and sisters. This is the LCSC vision and mission. I really pray and hope that as you get started in this work, you also grow so much more in your appreciation of our faith and that you all together grow in our service for the Lord. And in the succeeding talks, you'll be able to hear more uh, in greater detail how we do our activities and how we live our life in the LCSC. So may God's spirit be upon us and let's all go out and evangelize the whole world. Thank you very much, brothers and sisters.